I thought, like certainly most of my friends, the world was in a really bad place and getting worse and worse. Then I wrote, I read uh, uh, an interview with an American economist called Julian Simon in Wired magazine back in 1998. And he said, pretty much everything you know about the environment is wrong. Things are in general getting better. And I was like, no, that's just crap. But he said one thing that really annoyed me because by then I was actually teaching statistics in political science. Um, and I always told my students to go check the data. And he said exactly that, go check the data. And so I figured, all right, that's a, that's a challenge. I'm going to prove him wrong. <laughs> of course he's wrong, but I'll, we'll have fun. So I brought together some of my best students and you know, we bought his book and we we're going to go through it and meticulously show how he was wrong all kinds of places. Turns out that much of what he said was right. You know, if you think about it, it's kind of obvious. Most places in rich countries, the air has gotten much, much cleaner. You know, in London, we have good data back from 1585. Uh, and the London air got worse and worse and worse over the last 400 years up to about 1890. And since 1890, it's gotten cleaner and cleaner and cleaner so that today London air is cleaner than it's ever been since medieval times. You, you need to know this. And we don't. We don't often think about this, that mostly, partly because we're rich, partly because we decide to clean up. London Things air is better are, today than medieval times? Yeah, and that, this is true pretty much, probably not the same exact <laughs> dates for, for Florida, but Florida air is much, much better, and U.S. air is much better than it was four, uh, four decades ago, because we've cleaned it up for a lot of different reasons, but mostly because we're rich and we can afford to do so. When you're poor... You want to get rich. When you're rich, you actually want to stop coughing. So this is not rocket science, but we don't know. And that's incredibly important. And it will become important as we talk about global warming, because fundamentally people think global warming, just like all the other threats, is the end of the world. It's not. It's a slight impediment on the world getting better. So global warming means the world gets better slightly slower. Now, that's a very different kind of worry than the world is going to end. Is there any statistics of what age bracket fears global warming the most? You know, mm -hmm. like, is, is there a, uh, you know, Gen Zs or Gen Ys or, you know, millennials or boomers or Gen Xs? Is, is there any statistics on who fears it the most? Gen Z so, is top of the list. But no, I'm asking, yeah. like, is there actually statistics? So they... It used to be that uh, that young people worried more. So global uh, warming age gap, younger Americans yeah. most worried, 70%, uh, 18 to 34, 56%, uh, 55 and older. How about the ones in between? Are they confused? Like what about the <laughs> age? Uh, uh, can you go a little higher? I'm just curious to know what this, okay, there it is, 15 to uh, 34. So less and less think global warming will pose a serious threat in your lifetime. Well, yeah, but that's because when you're old, <laughs> you, you're, but, you're, but you know what this shows though it shows that yes. people yes. fear it less yes as they age than those like 55 and older they don't even think about it 29 percent but the younger audience 82 percent in understanding global warming issues why is it that it, you know it, it's normally younger students 18 20 22 that fear this the most I'll give you my perspective real quick. Uh, I grew up in L.A., and he immigrated to L.A., um, and I remember growing up with the smog in Los Angeles, and we were born within three years of each other, and you probably read about it, that the air in Los Angeles was horrible. The joke was, I don't touch, I don't, um, I don't trust air I can't touch. But the smog was so bad, and you can see the pictures from Los Angeles through the 70s. They went to unleaded fuel and and other things that happened with power plants. Uh, San Onofre went online, which is an old nuclear power plant in Southern California. And so I have a perspective in my own lifetime that I have seen LA's air get much better. I don't look at this as, oh, screw the grandkids. I'm, I'm out of here in 40 years. So, you know, I'm not worried about it. I don't look at it that way. I have perspective on Los Angeles, which was a horribly filthy city. And now you take a look. Hmm. Yeah, And again, the reason why I'm asking this question, because you'll hear stuff like, you know, Greta talk about in 12 years, we're all going to be dead. And how dare you? You know, and AOC gets up 12 years. If we don't you do this, my $30 child. trillion. Dollars. Why does this resonate with kids more than it does to people who are older? I, I think in some sense, it's just because they live longer. They have more likelihood of, of experiencing the really bad impacts of, of climate change. But probably also because we're, uh, you know, when you're young, certainly I had that experience. 
you just hear all these scary stories and you think, oh my God, the world is going to end. Uh, if you're a little older, you've heard a lot of other scary stories. I mean, if you think back to the first environment summit in the, in the UN in 1972 in uh, Stockholm, uh, the head of that uh, environment uh, conference told the world, we have just 10 years left in 1972. So, you know, we constantly hear this and you know, there's always the next thing around that's going to destroy us all. And once you've heard a few of them, maybe you become a little more skeptical about the next one. And you should. Look, there is a real there are real problems and certainly it was a real problem in, in Los Angeles with the uh, with the air pollution. But we fix these problems and remember, we fix them by being smart. So, you know, the main thing that actually fixed the Los Angeles uh, air pollution was the innovation of the catalytic converter. Mm -hmm. It was, the, you know, because most air pollution in Los Angeles is caused by cars. It was basically that every car got its own little, uh, you know, cleaning facility. And unleaded and, fuel, you know, they're, yes. they're talking about now by 2035, a certain percent of cars and they're sold in, in California have to mm -hmm. be electric. Well, there was a time where they said by a certain date, all cars have to be unleaded fuel, yes. but unleaded fuel in the catalytic converter, you're right, yeah. combined to make a so huge un change. Unleaded fuel was a fantastic idea, but it didn't actually uh, in uh, increase the air pollution, it, it, but it's very, very polluting, uh, but it, but it's not part of the air pollution. It sits on the ground and infects everything you uh, you eat and uh, you know, the vegetables, that kind of thing. But yes, absolutely. So, so you know. Catalyst, so you, you were saying, so the biggest difference, I just sent you, if you can show a picture of L.A. before and L.A. now, you said the biggest difference was catalytic converter. The so. catalytic converter. It's a it's a thing they invented in 1974, and it basically takes out a lot of the pollution from the exhaust uh, mm. pipe. It cost a couple hundred dollars, so you know it's not free, but it's not a big deal. And we put it on, we enforced it, and now the air is much much cleaner. And this also tells you how we fix most problems. We don't fix problems by telling everyone. I'm sorry. Could you know, imagine telling most Los Angeles? At Los Angelinos, is that the word? Yeah, yeah. you got uh, that yeah. thing. <laughs> Telling, uh, sorry, you can't drive. <laughs> you have to walk, yeah. run or something. That's never going to work, right? But you can tell them, put on this catalytic converter, and then we fix much of the problem. So instead of what we're also trying to do now today with global warming, telling everyone, I'm sorry, could you be a little poorer, a little colder, a little warmer, a, a little more uncomfortable, eat a little less and have a little less of all the fun stuff, but then we'll try and fix global warming. That'll never work. You know, yesterday what we What will work is technology. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.